Have you heard of King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard? Yes, the name is outrageous, but so is the music, in the best way possible. It calls for your attention, and I'm sure they'll win it over. King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard are making some of the most inventive, exciting, and memorable rock albums out there. Four years after their debut, they had released eight albums, about two a year since 2012. King Gizzard then went on to promise five albums for 2017. They just released number four out of five, and they gave this new one away for free. Who the hell are these guys? King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard are Stu McKenzie, lead guitarist, vocalist, songwriter, flute, keyboard, clarinet, sitar, double bass, bass guitar, and Zerna player. The guy can do it all, and he's the mastermind behind a lot of their conceptual ideas. Joey, the other guitarist, occasional vocalist. You. all-around great guy. Ambrose, just call me Kenny. he brings his wild harmonica and sultry voice into a few cuts. Then we have Cookie on rhythm guitar, Lucas on bass, and their two drummers, Cavs and Eric. Now, why does a band need two drummers? Why not? Have you heard how loud one drum kit sounds? Now imagine two at the same time. Eric gets a lot of shit. Even by the band. He's a bit of Eric. He doesn't have a kick drum. Suck shit. I think my kick drum got taken away because I lost my privileges. This is how he's credited on one of their albums. But this man is a genius. Eric started his own independent record label called Flightless Records, and it's essentially King Gizzard's own record label. It's insane work to be doing on top of already being a part of a touring band that releases multiple albums a year, but they give themselves the added responsibility of self-releasing their own music, and that of their friends. Speaking of albums, King Gizzard have released 12 to date, each revolving around some sort of concept. Their debut, 12 Bar Brews, has a garage rock sound, the title track recorded using just iPhones. It's very rough around the edges, but still cherished by many fans. You'd think they'd carry on and release something within the same vein for their sophomore, but no, they created a cult western audiobook. Some decent desert rock tunes with a narrated story by Ambrose's dad. Eyes like the sky. Later that year, Float Along Fill Your Lungs brought us their first real dive into psychedelic rock, and they cannonballed us with the 16 minute opening epic, Head on Pill. Then we got Oddments, King Gizzard's Black Sheep. Some of us like to pretend it doesn't count. It's a compilation of songs cut from previous albums, and let's just say some of them were cut for good reason. The album art was pretty dope though. They made up for it with I'm In Your Mind Fuzz. When asked where to begin listening to King Gizzard, I recommend baptizing your ears with this. Still one of their most accessible records, it debuted their song-to-song -song blending style that would be used in later releases, and I think this is the album where they found their groove and really came into their own. Quarters released with four songs, each exactly 10 minutes and 10 seconds long, hence Quarters. The River is the standout track here, still being played in their live sets today because it's just that damn good. Shaking things up, Paper Mache Dream Balloon arrived later that year and gave us an all-acoustic psychedelic pop record that had everyone's friends saying, this is that King Lizard Gizzard band you're listening to? But it's the tits, and it's filled with bright hooks that are a great diversion from their heavier sounds of the past. Nonagon Infinity landed in 2016, an infinite looping album where every song leads directly into the next, with the final track swinging you right back to the top of the track list for another go. This is where the masses, including myself, heard King Gizzard for the first time. It's an exhilarating 45 minute rock opera that remains my favorite album by them. It's a confirmed classic along with Mind Fuzz. Finally, after nine months, an eternity in Giz fandom, the Aussies dropped Rattlesnake. Repetitive as all hell, but trust me, when this gets played at a show, everyone goes nuts and starts chanting alongside Stu. Along with the new single, the dudes told us they were shooting for five albums in 2017. 
Some laughed, some were skeptical. I was excited. I, if, if anyone could do this, it was them. Now, this isn't anything new. Frank Zappa, James Brown, Elvis Presley have all done this before, released a handful of albums within a year. The rock bands of the past were always putting out classics back to back within the same year, just less so today. There's not many, if any, mass market artists doing that today, aside from maybe a guy named Buckethead who has released 28 albums in 2017 so far, with 302 albums to his name. The dude might be at 303 after this video, we'll see. But he's the exception. If you were a King Gizzard fan when you heard the news, you threw in the towel at last year's No Nut November. We were going to get a ton of new music from a great band. But many brought up the concern of quantity over quality, afraid that the quality of future albums would suffer just to meet the deadline of the task. While 2017 opened with Flying Microtonal Banana, Banana, where the guys modified their instruments, adding more frets to their guitars, to play the notes between notes, microtones. Notes not commonly heard in Western music. It's funky and Middle Eastern sounding, and a solid album from front to back. Murder of the Universe gave us what is probably King Gizzard's heaviest sounding album. Their second of the year is split into three chapters telling three fantastical stories and was met with mixed feelings as fans didn't really dig the whole spoken word throughout the track listing. There's a bit in nearly every track. I love it, but the spoken word does overshadow a lot of the instrumentation. The battle of the Balrog and the mighty light. Lord of lightning shifts his gaze. Murder of the Universe is also recognized as the third album in the Gizverse trilogy, as represented by the mountain and castle in its cover art. These three albums and a few other songs throughout their discography, as well as Polygon Awana Land, their latest, carry very similar themes that also musically call back to one another. I just think fans look too deep for something that's not there. The jazz-influenced Sketches of Brunswick East was made in collaboration with Alex Brenton of another band called Mild High Club, and is an ode to Brunswick East in Melbourne, Australia, where the group is headquartered. King Gizzard made the announcement that their fourth album of the year, Polygon Wanna Land, would be released for free. As in anyone could do anything they pleased with it. Stating, we do not own this record. You do. Go forth, share, and enjoy. Fans were quick to respond with crowdsourced vinyl pressings, small independent labels began making their own unique pressings, some even having the proceeds going towards charities. It's bringing music sharing to a completely new level, and it's such an exciting musical experiment. And still, the band teases, King Gizzard never break a promise, and are still on track to release five albums in 2017. We still have one more album to go, and the band has already delivered four very distinct albums within a year's time. I've gone days listening to only King Gizzard's albums, because there's that much variety in their discography. It wasn't which artist do I want to listen to, but which King Gizzard album do I want to listen to? There's one for every mood. Switching up their sound on every album also means that if you don't like one, there's always another new concept right around the corner. King Gizzard are the most prolific band today, period. And when I say prolific, I don't mean they're the greatest rock band today. Although their albums do receive critical acclaim, everyone has their favorites. We're all musical experts of our own tastes and can find music we enjoy. But King Gizzard have been touring all year long with their kick-ass live show. They've been pumping out consistent quality albums, each with a new sound, and very quickly. Members within the band have also released their own side projects as well. The Seven operate their own label, Flightless Records, and now they release their 12th album in five years, free, for the masses to do what they please. Oh wait, almost forgot about the music festival they created, host, and headline every year in Australia. That's right, it's called Gizfest, and that's with a hard G. There are bands that have ticked some of these boxes in the past, but King Gizzard is checking off all of them and more. They are growing, improving, and innovating with each new release, and not just musically. With King Gizzard's current rate of success, I have no doubt they will be remembered for years to come. If you're new to King Gizzard, want to give them a try, Follow the video on the left of the screen to what I believe to be the perfect introduction to their music. Thanks for watching, ladies and gents. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like rating and subscribe to learn more about the music you love. Are there any artists you know that are doing something great? Let me know in the comments below and keep listening.